Hello everyone, this is Pastor Chris coming to you uh, today to pick up where we left off yesterday on our stories that help us understand uh, God a little bit better and help us as people understand how we respond to God and how God responds to us. Yesterday we looked at the story of Abraham and Sarah and how they were blessed in order to be blessings to the world. Uh, we, we saw that that Jesus lineage goes all the way back to Abraham and even back to Adam, of course. But, but because uh, Jesus was Jewish, uh, he's traced back through the line of Abraham to be the ultimate blessing to all of humanity, to all of the world, to save us, to heal us from the brokenness of our lives and to restore our everlasting relationship with God. Today, though, we're going to jump uh, about 20 chapters later into Genesis to essentially the foundational story of my faith. Uh, not necessarily the verses, but the story itself is foundational for who I am and how I understand my walk with God. And it's the story of Jacob wrestling with an angel. Uh, Jacob, this is Genesis 32, Jacob is the grandson of Abraham, uh, the son of Isaac. When we hear in the Old Testament uh, the story, uh, when, when a lot of the prophets, when they talk about the, uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we're, going to, we're talking about this grandson, Jacob, today. Jacob was one of uh, two children that Isaac had. They were twins. Jacob was the second one. And there's a lot of stories in these 20 chapters between Abraham and uh, Jacob wrestling with the angel that are worthy of your time to read and to ponder upon. But this one I, I, I choose to, to help you understand and, and to help me articulate even better how I understand God and how God understands me, how God re relates to me. And so, here we go. This is in chapter 32. And I'm only going to read a short portion of it. Uh, Jacob uh, and his brother Esau are estranged over an inheritance dispute. Just to put it bluntly. You, you usually see the worst, of, the worst things in a family coming out in an in a inheritance uh, reading. And so... Um, here we are, uh, it's been years since they were estranged. And Jacob fled uh, Esau after this estrangement because he was afraid for his life. So Esau has gone his own way, Jacob has gone his own way, but now Jacob feels the need to reconcile with his brother. And so he packs all of his worldly possessions up, his two wives, his children, all of his flocks, all of his servants, all of his slaves, and. and Yes, there, there is slavery here. Not that the Bible condones it. It was just a fact of the world at that time. And so Jacob is moving toward the land that Esau inhabits. And he has sent all of his... They come to the river Jabbok. J-A-B-B-O-C-K. And they come to the river, river Jabbok. And uh, Jacob sends all of his people, all of his flocks. He sends everything over across the river, but he stays alone on the far side. doesn't say why, it just says that he stays there alone. And this is where this story picks up. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions, so Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. The, then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And the man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Your name will be Israel because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. 
But Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask me my name? And then the man blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. Hmm. This story tells you everything you need to know about my spiritual journey over the course of my whole life. I have struggled with God. I have denied God. I've held God at bay. And here it says that Jacob and this man, God, this angel or God, um, they wrestle all night and God could not overcome him and he could not overcome God. That's the story of my life. Surely God could overpower a human, but God's intention wasn't to overpower Jacob. And God's intention isn't to, over, to, to, to overcome or overpower me or you. God's intention is to wrestle with us. To wrestle with us with what it means to be a child of God. With what it means to be faithful. With what it means to do the right thing. To wrestle with God means to wrestle not with our faith, not with doubt, but to wrestle with God about who we are and what we are in this world. We are children of God. And if we don't wrestle with that every day, then we have not lived. Wrestling with God is not resisting God. It is engaging God. It is dialoguing with God. It is not arguing so much as it is figuring things out. Because we can never overpower God either. We can just run away. Or we can wrestle. And isn't that what faith is all about? Not a blind trust but a true wrestling in the spirit and in, in, in the body and flesh with what it means to be faithful to God's call on us, to God's identity in us and for us, to wrestle with that in order that we might live into God's desires when he created us in our mother's womb. How do we do that? We do so at our own peril. We do so at the risk of being changed, of being different, of growing into or, or realizing that we are living a life that is not genuine. To wrestle with God means that we are enlisting all of who we are in this struggle for identity. And every time in my life I've wrestled with God, just as when Jacob wrestled with this angel, this man, this whatever it was in camp with Jacob, just as Jacob wrestled with it, Jacob's hip was put out of joint. And it says in scripture that that is, that is why that joint is not eaten. Uh, at Jewish dinners today. It, it, it is the, the recognition of that wrestling match with God. And so, um, for me, every time I look back in my life where I have really struggled with my identity, with what was right and what God would have me do with a course direction with an identity challenge. Every time I've taken that seriously rather than run away, my hip has become dislocated. Not really, but there's been something disabled in me that makes me depend on God even more. There's something that has changed in me 
to where I cannot rely on my own resources as I could before. That I must turn to God. Now it says that the angel, the wrestler in the camp with Jacob, gave him a new name. He said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have wrestled with God and with humans and have prevailed. You've held your own. You were honest in your struggle. And that's what the name Israel means. When we utter the name Israel, we're uttering the name of this patriarch of the faith, this man who wrestled with his identity, wrestled with God to become who he was to become. And when we hear the name Israel as a nation, we recognize that this nation as well wrestles with God for the identity that they are to become. A warrior nation or a nation whose ancient capital is Jerusalem, the city of peace. That's the story of the nation. That's the story of the man. That's the story of Chris. I wrestle with God in order that I and my weakness may become more dependent upon God. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time with me. Tomorrow we're going to pick up with one of Israel's sons, a boy named Joseph. And from there, we will finish up my stories in Genesis. And then we'll go into Exodus. So for today, thank you for being here. I encourage you to find your story that makes you wrestle with who you are in your relationship with God and the way you live your life. For now, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bless you.